Welcome to C3G. In this video, I will show you how to run GenPipes on a Compute Canada cluster. If you are working at the McGill Genome Center, you can also run GenPipes on our own cluster, Abacus. For this video, I will follow the GenPipes online documentation. First, open your browser, type GenPipes read the docs in the search bar and press enter. Click on the first link and go to the online GenPipes documentation. Next, scroll through the page and click on how to deploy GenPipes. Then click the link for accessing GenPipes on Compute Canada servers. To run GenPipes on a cluster, all you need is a Compute Canada database account and a computer with internet access. So, the first step is getting a Compute Canada account. For that, click on this link and follow the guidelines. Once you get a Compute Canada account, you can move on to step 2. If you are using a Windows computer, you will need to install one of the command line tools, such as Sigwin or Putty. You can find the links to download these tools in the description below. If you are using a Mac or a Linux-based computer, you can simply use your terminal. Next, open the terminal or the command line software you installed on Windows and access the cluster using your Compute Canada credentials. For that, type ssh space and your Compute Canada username at the name of the server you are trying to log in, .computecanada.ca. Then press enter. Type your password and log into the cluster. After you have logged into the cluster, move on to step 3. All the software and scripts used by GenPipes are pre-installed on Compute Canada clusters. You will first need to set up your user environment to run GenPipes. You can start by adding these tool paths to your bash profile. For that, copy these lines of code to create a bash profile. If you already have a bash profile, do not delete anything already present. Copy these lines of codes and paste them at the bottom of the file. Save the changes to your bash profile and type the code on the screen to refresh your current shell environment. Next, you will need to find the latest version of GenPipes. You can find it by typing the code on the screen. This will show all of the available versions of GenPipes. You can also use the module spider to get this information. In this case, the current version of GenPipes is 3.3.0. However, you may use the latest version when you are running GenPipes. Now, go back to the GenPipes documentation. Copy these lines of code, open the bash profile and paste them at the bottom. To indicate the latest GenPipes version, type 3.3.0. Also, add your email address and it will be used to send GenPipes job status notifications. Finally, you need to include the resource allocation project ID. You can find your RAP ID by logging into the Compute Canada website. Save the changes and exit from your bash profile. Refresh the environment and you are all set to run the latest GenPipes. Now, we can move on to step 4, and start running GenPipes. GenPipes currently have 13 different pipelines. You can find the information about all of these pipelines in the documentation. In order to run a GenPipes pipeline, you should have a genomics dataset, a configuration file, a design file and, a read set file. Amongst them, the read set file is mandatory. The read set file contains information about the samples to be analyzed. Read sets refer to replicates that belong to a particular sample. Most pipelines merge read sets and run the analysis based on samples. In the read set file, list each read set used for the analysis, which samples are to be merged, and where your fastq files or BAM files are located. GenPipes can aggregate and merge samples when indicated by the read set file. Configuration files, or any files, contain parameters related to the cluster and the third-party tools. 
These configuration files are customizable, so you can use them to adjust different parameters in the pipeline. First, let's run a pipeline which only needs a read set file and a config file. I am going to run the HiC pipeline using a test dataset. You can download the dataset from the link in the description below. Create a new folder and download the test dataset into that. Unzip the file, using the command on the screen. These are the contents of this folder. You can also see the raw fastq files inside the raw data directory. Let's open the read set file. It consists of several required columns. You can see the sample and the read set name. Also, you can see the paths for fastq files. You can either specify BAM or FASTQ files in the read set file. Each column is identified by its name, so make sure to follow the same column names as in our sample read set file. Let's run the pipeline now. Type hic.py and press enter. You can see the full argument list that is required to run the pipeline. Go to the documentation and copy this line of code. Paste it here, and change the INI file for your corresponding cluster. Here, you must correctly specify the read set file name, and the number of steps you would like to run. Press enter after you modify the code. GenPipes now creates a script with all the jobs to submit to the Compute Canada cluster. Let's submit the jobs. All the jobs have been submitted. Let's check the status of these jobs by typing SQ. You can see the status of each job here, for example, whether they are currently running or not. Now, let's create a custom INI file and rerun the pipeline. Here, I am changing the parameters of one of the steps in the pipeline. For that, you can copy the contents in the INI file. Then, create a custom INI file, and paste the code you just copied. Now modify the parameters you want to change, save the file and exit. Next, rerun the pipeline. But this time add the custom INI file after the cluster-specific INI file. You can submit the jobs to the cluster like before, and get the results. Next, let's run a pipeline with a design file. For that, let's follow the instructions in the GenPipes documentation. Go to the GenPipes documentation, and click on the GenPipes user guide.
Click on Pipeline Reference Guide. We are going to run the RNA sequencing pipeline. Click on Example Run. Download the test dataset and unzip the data file. Now, let's go inside the data directory. Let's have a look at the design file. You must specify the exact sample name in the first column, and contrasts in the other columns. Control groups can be specified with the digit 1, and treatment groups marked with 2. You can have any number of contrasts you like. This is how, an actual design file looks like. Let's run the pipeline by specifying the design file. Copy the lines of code in the documentation, paste them in the command line, and modify them accordingly. Finally, you can submit the jobs you created. Once the jobs are completed, you will get the results.